All right, so let's look at some real-world examples of direct variation. Um, and first, just reviewing the concept of a direct variation. Um, the relationship between two variables, you know, x and y, is called a direct variation if one of the variables is a constant multiple of the other. So what does that mean? Just this. The, the relationship can be described as, uh, you know, if you're dealing with y and x, y equals k times x, where k is just some number. So, you know, for example, y equals um, y equals three times x. That means y is always three times uh, as big as x. So we would say y varies directly as x, and this is the constant of variation. Um, it's the thing that that multiplies. I don't know. Never mind. It's a constant of variation. It's it's the uh, it's the multiplier that governs the relationship between y and x. Okay, um, so uh, these things exist in the real world, and I struggled to find three examples um, that would be good. I like these three examples. Um, hopefully, as you progress in life, you can find some more examples. Um, and so let's just look at them. And let's set up an equation that's like this, that has this form. Um, so if I, so starting off here, if I run 24 miles in four hours and my distance varies directly as time, so there's my big clue. I'm gonna switch colors. There's my big clue. It, uh, distance varies directly as time. So when you hit, see this varies directly as business, you know one thing varies directly as another. Um, that you know you're going to have a, an equation like this. So um, distance varies directly as time. I could say distance um, is equal to some constant times time, right? So something, I have an equation like this. I'm uh, just applying it to this real example where I'm not dealing with y and x, which is so abstract. I'm dealing with distance and time. Uh, but if I, were to, if I were to graph this, by the way, though, uh, I would... I would put distance. Um, I would put distance on the y axis. Um, put miles over here, and the time here on the x axis. Usually, you put time on the x axis. Then you can graph that direct variation, and um, actually the slope would correspond to the constant variation. Anyway, well let's just do this as an equation. You can graph it uh, yourself if you so desire. So we know that distance varies directly as time, so we, we can set up this equation initially. Um, now the question is how quickly am I running? Um, so I'll, let's set up the equation and then I'll show you how that connects. Um, so I, I run 24 miles in four hours. So my distance is 24 miles when four hours have passed. So 24 is some constant times four, four hours. Okay, we're just plugging in what what we know. All right, so I can solve for k. You know, what times four is twenty-four? So k would be six. Now, so let's rewrite the equation. Distance equals six times time. So six would be our constant of variation. Now. Um, so the distance in miles is equal six times um, seconds, or no, hours. Sorry, when my unit of time is hours. Okay. So um, I'll show you. So all right, first let's look at this graphically. If I were to graph this um, hours and then miles here. Uh, so after, um, so let's plug in some values. After one hour, I will have gone uh, six, six miles. After two hours, we'll have gone 12 miles, etc. So the slope here is my, the change in miles over the change in hours. So my slope would be, would be 
Uh, some number of miles versus hours. What's my slope? Well, I could rewrite this as, or I would just look at this as y equals mx plus b, the slope intercept form. b is 0, there's nothing here. What's this? That's the slope. So my slope here is 6 miles per 1 hour, if that makes sense. So how quickly am I running? I'm running 6 miles per hour, or MPH, miles per hour. 6 miles per hour. So, um, so distance equals speed times time. So now let me just kind of continue with this. Um, let me just write it this, this way. 24 miles is equal to um, 6 times 4 hours. So if I were to solve, if I were to rearrange this, I could, I could divide by 4 hours. Divide by 4 hours. So I've got 24 miles per four hours is equal to six, six what? Uh, so I divide 24 by four, that's six. So I divide 24 by six, that's six miles per one hour, or six miles per hour. So I'm just kind of showing you why, why the six represents speed, miles per hour. Yeah, okay. That might have been too much information, but I want you to see the connections between between the slope of what this would be, between the constant of variation and the slope, uh, why the the unit of the um, the constant of variation would be the uh, y-axis variable divided by the x-axis variable, etc. So see these connections. Okay. But back to the um, the idea of direct relationship. Um, as, a, as an equation of this form. Okay, so the weight of an object on Jupiter varies directly, ding, 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 keyword, keywords, I guess, uh, with its weight on Earth. Actually, I guess I should say varies directly as its weight on Earth. Um, to me, it's more intuitive to say with, varies directly with, um, but a lot of times you'll hear varies directly as. Okay, so uh, the weight of an object on Earth varies directly with its, uh, on Jupiter, weighs uh, varies directly with its weight on Earth. So um, we call it J is your weight on Jupiter. It varies directly um, with your weight on on Earth. So the w your weight on Jupiter is some constant times your weight on Earth. So if I weigh, so I don't know what the constant is. If I weigh uh, 145 pounds on Earth and 342.7 pounds on Jupiter. True story. That's why the decimal's in there. So my weight on Jupiter is 342.7 pounds, and that's some constant times 145. I, I, I take 145, and to convert it into my weight on Jupiter, I multiply it by something. So let's solve for that something first, so we can re rewrite this equation. Instead of saying k, we can put what the actual number is. So I divide both sides by 145 to get k by itself. Oops. Uh, sorry, I'm moving my screen over. Uh, there we go. OK, uh, divide by 145. So I'm just going to grab the old trusty here. 342. 0.7 divided by 145 is 2.36 something something something. Let's just call it 2.36. So your weight on Jupiter is 2.36 times your weight on Earth. So that's this this is the e the direct variation equation. Your weight on Jupiter and uh, equals 2.36 2.36 times your weight on Earth. Okay, so how heavy would a piano be on Jupiter if it weighs 500 pounds on Earth? Okay, so we would just plug that in here. All right, its earthly weight would be 500 pounds. 
So we do that number times 500. Um, boom, 1,181 point some stuff um, pounds on Jupiter. So, you know, very heavy piano. Uh, all right, one more. I should say biologists. Biologists found 10 gibbons. Uh, that's, that's a kind of ape. Actually, my favorite kind of ape. I'm really into gibbons right now. Um, they're small, but they, they can do flips and stuff. Yeah. Biologists found 10 gibbons in 20 square acres of rainforest. If the population of gibbons varies directly as the size of their habitat, how many gibbons live in the entire uh, 1 million square acre forest? Okay, so uh, the population of gibbons, so let's call it P, varies directly as the size of their habitat. Um, so P times K, let's call it uh, A for acres. So the population, yeah, all right, no, how, I should say gibbons equals K times acres. All right, so they found 10 gibbons in 20 square acres. 10 gibbons in 20 um, square acres. So 10 is uh, K times 20. So let's find out what that what that constant of variation is. So we divide both sides by 20 to get K by itself. 10 divided by 20 is 1 half. 1 half, also known as 0.5. So we could say gibbons, the number of gibbons is 0.5 times the uh, the size of the habitat um, in in acres. Now I don't know if this is actually realistic for gibbons, um, but this this principle is used, um, you know, you to to figure out the the number of the population of a certain kind of animal in an area. You don't have to count every single animal in the area. You can you can look at a few different small parts of the area and then extrapolate. And you can you can assume that uh, you know the equations might be slightly more complex, but this basic situation is is what a biologist would use. You know, we say that basically that um, the population of the gibbons is proportional to the size of the habitat. So let's look at part of the habitat and then kind of extrapolate for the whole thing. So here's our basic equation. You know, it might not be exactly true for um, the actual rainforest we're looking at, but you know, something roughly of that shape. Okay, so um, this gibbons is 0.5 times the number of acres. So how many gibbons live in the entire 1 million square acre forest? So we'd plug in uh, 1 million there. So 0.5 times 1 million or 1 half of 1 million. So we would expect to find, if this relationship is true, you know, if it does vary directly, we'd expect to find 500,000 gibbons in a, in a million square acres. Um, I doubt that's realistic, but this basic kind of principle is what you would use to figure out, um, is what you use to extrapolate total population versus, you know, a small, small population. Yeah? Okay, so there's, a, there's a some, those are some examples of direct variation. Um, these two are, are fairly precise. Um, this, this I'm giving you as an example of the sort of thought process you could use. Um, these numbers are sort of made up, so don't hold on to that too closely. Um, th these numbers are right. This is could be anything. Yeah. All right, direct variation.